Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast presented by Onyx. So one thing I want to talk about with Onyx is actually a free feature that they offer over on their website called Hunt Central. And this has all the states available. You can go in, I'm going to use, for example, Pennsylvania. You can click on Pennsylvania, pulls up the map with all the hunting units available. You can click on them, see all the different seasons, when the dates come in. You can look at statistics from the white-tailed deer, for example, 98 Boone and Crockett bucks were taken out of Pennsylvania. In addition to that, you can check out the average weather, um, the prices of the archery license permits, any any sort of license and permits available, links to the the hunting trapping digest of the Pennsylvania Game Commission's um, you know, all the rules and regulations, you can see, you know, obviously the, the amount of private and public lands and, you know, just a lot of different stuff within all these states. And I'm just using Pennsylvania, for example, but hunt central is a really good resource for scouting and looking at different areas. If, um, especially throughout the East coast and the Appalachian mountains, where there's not as much information available. So, like I said, in addition to the Hunt app, which uh, you've heard me talk about a lot, you can check out the Hunt Central. And if you des- decide you want to look at the Hunt app and be able to have mobile GPS on your phone at any time, anywhere, go to onyxmaps.com, use the coupon code EMW, and you'll save yourself 20% off of the online app. So, in addition, Elk 101 and Corey Jacobson have come out with the University of Elk Hunting, which is an all comprehensive elk hunting learning course available to anyone from you know beginners that are just getting into Western hunting and elk hunting, or you know some of your veterans that want to learn more. And it just really dives into everything available um, as far as it comes to elk hunting. This time of year is the best to get into it because this course is not something that's going to take you, you know, a couple hours to go through. It's, it's time consuming and that's a good thing because it really doesn't leave out any of the details and was really useful for me in, uh, in my elk hunting learning curve over the last four years. So check that out, elk101.com, click on the University of Elk Hunting, Save yourself 20% off of the online course with the code East Meets West. In addition, the podcast is brought to you by Mountain Tough Fitness. So I went into extreme detail last week on you know what Mountain Tough is, but they have a, a special deal going on right now, and it's only available through January 24th. So only a couple days left here that you can save $150 off of their backcountry hunter all access. So basically it's a four month backcountry hunter, the postseason strength program that you should be doing right now. And then it goes in the two month spring training program, which is focused more on cardio. And then the four month preseason program that helps build a combination of strength and cardio to get you through your your next hunting adventure, I went through it uh, last year. I you know I bought the course and went through the whole entire thing, and I was in the best shape of my life. And and you you don't need to be, you know, in the in the best shape to go on hunts. I'm not saying that, but I can promise you, you'll never wish you were in worse shape. And it really truly allows you to be able to go further. So in addition to those courses, you also get the new fall in season program the Mountain Tough online nutrition program, access to all the coaches for questions and support, lifetime access to the lab, which is really the whole workout program through video and text. And also it's interactive with other members on your phone, smartphone, tablet, desktop, whatever, 24 seven. So, you know, check that out over at mountaintough.com. Right now, like I said, until January 24th, you can save $150 off the course. So it's normally $849. You get that for $699. And I truly believe in investing in yourself, as you see two of the partners 
are on basically online courses and things to better yourself because the knowledge and what you do with your body and your health is long-term investments, not just something that you buy and, you know, it kind of goes away after a while. So I can't stress that enough. Check out Mountain Tough at mountaintough.com. And lastly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about backcountry hunters and anglers and specifically the Pennsylvania chapter. They will be over at, uh, they'll be over at the Harrisburg Great American Outdoor Show at booth 4507. And you can go over there and learn what they're all about. Um, They have special membership deals going on throughout the week. And also the Backcountry Bash, which is at the Appalachian Brewing Company in Harrisburg on February 7th. And that starts at 7 p.m. I'll be there for that. I was there last year. It was a great turnout. Uh, We're talking about doing some special things there. Not sure if it's going to happen, but uh, um, who knows? I'm not going to talk about it yet, but there might be some really cool things going on at the, the Backcountry Bash. So anyways... I'm a big proponent of protecting public lands and which is, you know, the majority of what I hunt and what a lot of you do as well. Backcountry hunters and anglers is at the leading edge of the conservation of these public lands. So follow them on Instagram and Facebook. You can do or backcountryhunters.org. So check that out. All right. So today I am really, really excited about the release of the elk hunting film from my Idaho hunt called Synergy. It is available now on YouTube. Head over, check that out. My YouTube page name is just Bo Martonic. And you can also, you know, type in Synergy in Idaho elk hunting trip. And you can check that out. And also I'll put a link in the in the show notes here so it's easier to find. But been getting some really good feedback on the film. Justin Mueller did an excellent job of filming it and editing it, putting it together. I mean, really, I was just, you know, a face on the on the the film there. He did all the, you know, the legwork. But what's really, you know, special about this film for me is not only was it the four year journey of, you know, it taking me to, to be able to kill a bull on public land with my bow. It's more or less just showing everybody that it's possible. I'm just a regular guy like you that, you know, had a dream to be able to hunt elk in the in the West. And it just took a lot of persistence and determination and failing over and over again until I was able to, to you know, actually accomplish that goal. So I, I th- would really like it if you guys check that out. If you like it, you know, subscribe to the channel leave a comment, like the video, that stuff helps so much. Share it with your friends. That really means a lot. And, and thank you so much for all the support up to this date. Uh, and also on a downer note, found out, uh, one of the bucks I was hunting got killed on Saturday, mistaken for a doe. So that's, uh, he lost one antler and the other side broke off right above the base. And I had photos of him after rifle season. I thought he made it. It was going to be my number one buck to try to go after this coming year. And uh, it's really sad to get that picture sent to me today. But it is what it is. There's more deer out there. I'm, I guess if you look at it from a positive standpoint, I didn't need to get obsessed over another deer. So that <laughs> that's a, a decent way of looking at it there. But anyways, uh, t- on today's episode, I'm joined by Chris Derrick, once again, from Sick of Gear, and Owen Murphy of Ohio Whitetail Company, Latitudes, o- Ohio Whitetail Company, who I was hunting with here, um, I guess it would be last week, in Ohio for a late season whitetail hunt. And this this episode is is great. These guys are fun to talk with. I really enjoyed sharing camp with them just for a few days after the ATA show. So definitely would uh, recommend you check that out. And uh, yeah, we got I recorded a bunch of podcasts at ATA and have some other ones coming out. It's going to be I'm really excited to to start to get some more episodes flowing and you know helping everyone with their planning 
of their adventures. I mean, that stuff is awesome. If you happen to, you know, have a successful year, or even if you didn't, you just got to go out west or you you know, started hunting mountain bucks or whatever that might be, you know, share that, those stories with me. I'd really, I really like reading them and seeing the photos and everything else. So that, that, uh, really means a lot. So send that stuff over. I'd love to check it out and, uh, talk to you about a little bit, but anyways, all right, enough of me rambling on here. Let's, uh, let's get into the podcast here with Chris Derrick and Owen Murphy. All right, we're live from hunting camp. Um, joined uh, once again by my good friend Chris Derrick, Woo-hoo. <laughs> and my new friend Owen Murphy. Yeah, so, what's going on, Owen? Having fun. Having fun, deer camp. Chris, you working or are you hunting? I'm now working. <laughs> <laughs> Started hunting. <laughs> That kind of seems to be the the story of these trips, you know. You do you do just as much working as hunting. And I thought you were just living the dream. Yeah, this is a dose of real life. Now you get to see what real life's like for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess so. So, anyways, we're out here at uh, Owen's Outfitter and Latitude yeah. Whitetail Outfitting. Is that the right name? Latitudes Ohio Whitetail Company, or we just do like. Ohio Whitetail Company. Okay, gotcha. I was I was, I saw a couple ways it was spelled out there, so I wasn't wasn't a hundred percent sure. But we're out here doing some product testing and uh, yeah, doing a little bit of late season deer management or trying to right spring December deer hunting. Yeah. kind of it seems. Yeah, <laughs> if we were doing deer management. There would be does on the ground. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to make it sound like you know it's, it's strategic, but and uh, yeah, it, the, the weather has not been ideal for late season hunting. That's for sure. No, it's been pretty warm, unseasonably warm. Yeah, it was. Um, what I think sixty yesterday, something like that. It got up to close to it. Yeah. Some yeah, and even over the the weekend and stuff, it hadn't been real good weather for the middle of January. But at least that's our excuse. My excuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we no, we saw a lot of. I, I mean, yeah, I had one of the I, one of the best experiences seeing deer and seeing bucks. Like that's I don't see that in Pennsylvania. Okay, <laughs> right? that's the bonus. We got to bring Bo around more. The PA guys, we got to get them in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm like just <laughs> pumped up to the roof, you know. <laughs> Wait a minute, you actually see deer? <laughs> I'm like, hold on a second. You know, Owen's over here, man. I, these, if we had some cold weather, these big ones would be showing in daylight, and they're they're coming on camera. They're just a little a bit little behind off. Us. Yep, a little and, late. And I'm like, I'm I'm good with what I'm seeing. Well, there's, yeah, deer. I want to shoot, but <laughs> uh, it's not the right thing to do for sure. For the, the management here, but yeah, so it's overall it's been it's been good so far. It's a really unique property that you have here. Do you want to kind of go into a little bit of a a, a background one on yourself, and then kind of what you got going on here? Yes, we. Uh, I guess I was able, fortunate enough, to get the opportunity to uh, help run manage this place for you know the whitetail. And turkey into things, but you know, focus being on whitetails uh, about three years ago. Uh, and Chris actually uh, was one of, I guess, probably the fir- one of the first guys turn of the year to come down um, with a few other guys from Sitka and do some bow slash muzzleloader hunting. And, but we had just kind of got the key, so it was kind of throwing darts against the wall and hoping for the best, which it was super cold then. And we saw, I think we still saw a lot of deer. I mean, we had opportunities. I mean, it was, it was great. It was just, that was the first year you were trying to figure out. Just, what yeah, was on just the taking place stabs start- at, you know, looking at topographical maps and aerials and all that and going, that looks good. And yeah, shushing these guys out in the wood and saying, good luck. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, fast forward to now that it's been a couple of years and we've kind of just tried to let the property rest but we've also taken some pretty good bucks off the property in the past few years and we've this year was the first year we've had like you know basically non-industry paid clientele in but on a small scale only probably total of maybe 10 guys 
uh, paying clients in. And then obviously next year it'll get bigger, but just kind of taking a slow roll approach to making the most of what we have here, you know? Yeah. How many acres uh, is the total that you make? It's close to 5,000 total. And it's all, I guess that's our, our marketing piece, our selling point. And the neat thing is it's mostly all timber. Um, but most of it's in Ohio, and then I think it's close, roughly close to four or 500 acres that is in Pennsylvania. Okay. The, you know, the Ohio PA border kind of runs down, let's say, our, our Ohio side. So, our, you know, that those that acreage spills then over into PA. Um, but it's all contiguous, which is kind of neat, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that's cool because you can actually figure out where a deer is going or, you know, attempt to at least. You're right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Take yeah. You know, within the, that 5,000 acres. And yeah, it, it's, I've never hunted a place where you can literally hunt on the border. And I was lucky I had both tags, so it didn't right. matter which side they were on. <laughs> I know, that's the that's a big benefit. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about, the, I guess, the, the property. Because my first impressions of seeing it was that there's so much diversity with the terrain, the vegetation, like, I mean, you can get your, you can get your Midwest farm country. Yeah. You can get your big woods style, you know, you got some terrain, big hardwood ridges yep. and everything else. Yeah. So somebody, you know, a lot, they've been, it's been logged over the years. So you get some nice old growth and then you get some certain areas that have that good understory kind of, and then there's some great topography here with river bottoms and just, you know, fingers and valleys and the deer obviously you know obviously you being from pa too can appreciate that the topography really plays a big role in that open timber type stuff of how they use that to their advantage to get to where to and from where they need to be but um the property's been managed just to almost keep it you know besides the logging and whatnot to keep it the way it is and we were fortunate enough to be able to come in and uh, work on this whitetail operation, but, you know, f you know, financially give something back to the family that, that owns it, but leave a small footprint basically to, you know, kind of keep the farm the way it is. Yeah. Which is, can, I can get behind that. <clears throat> yeah. And, and you guys took some good deer off of it the last couple of years as well. We've been lucky, <laughs> right? Better, better than to be lucky than good, I think is the saying. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't think it's luck, though. I just, I mean, the first year I was here, uh, you know, one that, Owen at the time, it said one of the target's bucks, but we're hunting late, late the season. So one of the things that you run in this time of year is they sometimes drop their antlers. That's right. <laughs> and so the first year I was here, which, it you was know, there was this really nice looking deer that that Owen said, Hey, this is one of our targets. You can take him. And I got to see him. I don't know what his name was. Cause I renamed him <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> but he, he was half rack after. Right. So I saw him, he had dropped one side. And so this deer spends a long time nearby me and <laughs> we let him go. Yeah. And, uh, and then the next year, I mean, tell him about what happened. He, uh, yeah, so he's like one of the biggest deer we had on camera. Chris said, you know, we're like pretty sure that's him. And then the next year, uh, I think a season went by, like we had him again on camera, but never could. Um, Chris was here in January, so that fall, got him on camera again before he shed his velvet, like same summering spot, and then was like gone, you know, and like would keep me up at night of being like, He's got to be, you know, he's somewhere, but where did he go? So a whole another season goes by, summer comes back around. We put cameras up again, same spots, some mineral sites that we put out, and there he is again. And it's like, all right, enough. <laughs> you know, like, and he's gotten, like, he just kept getting bigger and bigger. And we're like, all right. So we had some guys coming in, gosh, late October. And so I gave myself a window that we were still trying to knock down some, some bucks if possible, just for, you know, be able to show some people that it's not just trail camp pictures and ghosts that walk around. But I had some one ghostly picture of him at night at like 2 a.m. 
in a place that I didn't expect him. And then just took his direct, it was, it was maybe more towards four thirty or five in the morning heading certain way. So I said, all right, he's got to be going, he's heading back to his bed somewhere and crossed a couple, like a couple valleys, walked a field's edge and came upon a big old scrape. And in the scrape was just some real unique time marks. And I said, all right. And it was, we had just gotten our, uh, cell cams up and, and running too. So I hung a camera and probably about one thirty that night, I woke my wife up in a panic. She woke up in a panic. I woke up in a pure, you know, excitement, you know, super <laughs> excited. She's like, what is wrong? And I said, nothing is wrong. I said, I found him. <laughs> and so from then on, that was like early October, um, he had moved about from where he summered, he had moved about a half as the crow flies about a half mile. Okay. And he was super consistent over summer. So that's why I said like he moved, like he was on camera every night and had moved about a half mile then and started showing up pretty regularly. And, uh, I hunted him like five times and the fifth time I was able to catch up with him. No way. In the morning, like I had to work later in the day and I was like, one of those mornings, like you wake up, like, do I go or just, is it worth the effort? Yeah. Or do you drive the almost two hours to do that, get up? And my wife's like, just go. And she's done that twice. And every time she said, just go, I've killed deer. So now I just listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out. The deer showed, like it was one of those mornings, like he was the first deer that showed up and it, like he did like a double take, like. Really? Yeah. And uh, luckily it all it all kind of worked out, but it started with when those guys first kind of rolled in and put eyes on them. Huh. But that's interesting. And and then this what what year was that? 2018? That would have been the 20 2017. I think it was 18 season. Yep. So 2 years ago. Yeah. It's yeah. 2 years ago, correct. Gotcha. hundred <laughs> percent. And, uh, this past year, was it one of your clients that killed yeah. an absolute Chris has giant? Chris has got ties to that deer too. Uh, oh man. <laughs> I thought that's where that story was going. <laughs> I, well, you know, Chris. Yeah. No, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to get into that one, but, uh, I definitely have ties to that deer and, uh, somebody else. I was just hoping. Chris saw that deer. Mm-hmm. We all had uh, the deer that got shot this year, uh, same time frame. We knew him. He was a cool deer. He was a younger deer. He had great characteristics, and I think he was probably somehow tied to the deer I shot two years ago genetically and uh, let him walk. Couldn't catch up to him uh, in between years. And then this fall, uh, one of our, what's, gosh, late October, he was again too, and the neat thing about having this contiguous piece of property is that we get to, you know, in theory, we don't have cameras everywhere, uh, but you get to see where they eat, where they sleep, and kind of where they, you know, all their different parts of their day or their week almost. You know, you get yeah. to see their their whole loop. Um, so this deer would travel. Gosh, he would he would be up in the hills. And then he would travel down some mornings and be on the river bottom. So we had two or three sets that we were putting guys in saying, you're, you know, you're all hunting this deer. He's, it's just a matter of time. You know, if the wind's right and everything comes together and he's there. Um, it'll work out. We actually had a guy on the river bottom the one morning it was pouring rain. He got in quiet, got in the stand and about, you know, the rain stopped and eight thirty nine o'clock and he's sitting there, you know, does rolled through in the morning and then, uh, He's sitting there and he looks out about 40, 50 yards and a, that deer that he had been, ha uh, we've been after, which we called El Paso, uh, named after the best margaritas here. And, uh, oh, East I Liverpool. didn't even pick up on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Calcutta, East Liverpool area, uh, stood up and shook off, you know, did the whole shake off in front of him. And he's like, my jaw about hit the floor that he was bedded there the whole time. And I had no idea it was there. Um, Unfortunately for him, one of the other guys in camp caught up with him, I think, the next day in the evening, but about a half mile from where he had bedded in the morning. Really? Yep. <laughs> so. That's crazy. Huh. That's, that's, yeah, crazy stories. And, and even from, you know, some of the the 
trail camera photos and our sightings and stuff. It's going to be exciting coming it's up. It's a neat few place. Years, you know, and there's, uh, one, there's a lot of potential for some of these great, you know, younger deer that have good frames and a couple of studs that look like they're going to make it through now. <laughs> right. I, I mean, you're I, leaving town. Yeah, I'm leaving It's all town, on so. Chris and Brandon now. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get to go out again, so we'll have to see. I've got uh, actual product work to do, but uh, uh, we know who all who does all the heavy lifting on that end. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll sneak out one more time. It's hard not to. I'm trying to find excuses right now. That's so. right. Yeah. We're, we're ahead of schedule, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so to, um, to kind of go into that, the you know, the purpose of, you know, this trip and everything, Owen, both you and I have been doing, you know, product testing for Chris and, and sick gear. And that was one of the, the things, Chris, you came out and worked with me on a new, a new, uh, pack that's yeah. going to be coming out here in, yeah. in 2020. And that's been creating a lot of buzz once we got the okay to start sharing some photos with zero details attached to them. Yes. So <laughs> we can talk about it somewhat and, uh, um, but, uh, yeah, actually, what's kind of interesting is one of the first places that I used the uh, earlier prototypes was at Owens uh, several years ago, and um, uh, and so we did a hang and hunt uh, up actually where I saw half rack. I don't know what do you call that deer later. OG, on? OG. Okay. He was the first like real big deer that we got on camera, so we called him OG. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, he's half rack to me. So. <laughs> um, and. Uh, so anyway, we, uh, we were over here and I, he had a spot that, that, uh, didn't have a stand with it at the time. So, but I went up there and, and did a hanging hunt and, um, uh, that's what the packs really designed for. Um, so if you're doing a lot of the public land style stuff where maybe you don't want to leave your stand or you're not allowed to leave your stand in the woods, um, it's a, it's a great pack for that. Um, and so the way it's designed, it's, it's our largest capacity pack, uh, has a really nice way of carrying sticks separately. Um, and, uh, and then you can sandwich, uh, a stand in the pack as well. Um, so if you're going to carry something like a, a lone wolf or a climber or something else, uh, and you can, you can do that. And then you, you and I were, we started the saddle thing and, and that's where, man, when you're doing mobile hunting, now using those tethered um saddles it, it's even nicer i'd say yeah yeah that um we you know I, i've been using the pack now for two years as it's been going through its iterations and changes and i feel like i have it dialed down like on just set up for mobile hunting i mean this year i hunted 100 percent without fixed stands always carrying in and out and whether that be a stand or the saddle and it's extremely efficient that was one of the things that when we were going through the designs one of the things that, that i was saying was it has to be easy to be able to take apart in the dark be able to put it back together be you know quick and be able to carry the weight comfortably and i think it's i think it's there <laughs> yeah we actually held it too uh when we started it it wasn't there um so we spent an extra year just fine tuning and getting everything right. So that's one of the things when we don't feel like something's right, there's not pressure to bring it out. We can hold it longer to make sure things, things are right. So we, you know, we spent a little bit extra time, but, um, that one's been a fun one to work on. It's, it's a really specialist. If you got to carry a lot of cargo, it's the type of, uh, pack that you'd want to do. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, it, it's fun and, and getting to spend some time with you, hunting in PA this year, uh, and, and going out in your neck of the woods and actually using it was, was great. And, and was able to actually even take, um, go out and hunt. I spent most of the front half of the week actually doing regular work, but yeah. <laughs> I did get at the end to spend the day going and actually got to fill one, yeah. a tag in PA. So that was nice. Yeah. Cause when we recorded that, the hundredth episode, you know, with you there, that was, a couple of days prior to you actually being able to to get a buck, then yeah, it was. And uh, did so, you guys did you guys d discuss that? No, no, we haven't. No, we haven't discussed <laughs> that. And so, I 
went, I did get to hunt and I passed on an eight point and I did get ridiculed, ridiculed for, um, <laughs> passing on this deer. You ever like what you're in public land PA, yeah. <laughs> you're here for like four days and you're going to have two days to hunt and you passed on that deer. And I was like, Oh, I didn't ridicule you. I just said <laughs> you might want to, if you could take that back, you probably should. have. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all I said. Yeah, so uh, so then that was uh, an all day sit. Yeah, an all day rain. Mm. <laughs> it was pretty much total misery. Yep. But I, I was like, let's sit out here and embrace the suck and yep. do some field testing. And so, um, so it was good. But right at the end, uh, you know, able to see that that deer. And then the last day uh, before I was getting ready to head out to the airport. Um, Bo had seen an area. I'm not from there. You know, we, we had been looking at stuff on Onyx and, and trying to figure out, you know, where we would go. And it was a spot we hadn't been into, but you were like, you ought to look over in this area. And so went in the dark, had a rough idea where I needed to roughly set up. Yeah. And, uh, well, actually, my waypoint didn't show up when I sent it to you in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I I went in there. I was basically like, just guided himself into that. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a nice way to say it. I'll, uh, but I did go to the waypoint where Bo had said it, and I was like, "There is not a tree over fifteen feet tall in this area. Just How clear, on clear earth cutting. am I going to set yeah. up? What is Bo it's trying to do to me here?" Point. But I was like, "This spot." Looks pretty nice. And luckily, I found exactly where you had meant to put it. Yeah, you were literally one tree over from where I where I thought I had the pin mark. Apparently, I didn't. But yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that actually happened twice. And I, apparently, I'm not as good of a guide as you are, Owen. Because <laughs> yeah. when, you send, when you send waypoints, I go right to the spot. It's there. Another spot, I wasn't clear when I told Chris. I said, this area is pretty good. And... Or I might have said you should set up a stand here. Well, I just marked a general area. <laughs> this and Chris little. climbed the tree and he's like, This spot sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You yeah, you went and you were like, I'm throwing it right here and I was like I went in there and I was like, Well, I guess <laughs> it's gonna be you're gonna have to be close. This, I'm I'm trusting Bo on this one. That was the day before that. Yeah. And that was like straight gropple, snow, sleet, rain day, yeah. and uh, <laughs> that was that afternoon, and that was um, that was pretty miserable. And uh, <laughs> um, so I came back, and I was like, "Bo, that I didn't know how I, I, what was supposed to happen." You were like, "No, no, that was just a general area." Yeah, and, like, oh, and okay. he was trying to say it in a nice way, like right. that sucked, as but uh, polite and, as Chris is. Yeah, and he's usually not very polite, so I was kind of surprised <laughs> by that. I'm pretty much uh, I, how I think. So. <laughs> no, but back to the the buck story. So yeah, um, yeah. So it was. <laughs> so he set up the sticks, and I was in there that morning, and um, we, uh, uh, I was in the saddle, and. Um, I would say I haven't spent as much time in that, but as I should have before, but, um, I had do, done some practicing and I would say if anyone is planning on going over to saddle, spend some time because what happened in that place, which was a lot of fun, but he came from the offhand side. And what I mean is as soon as you like hunt a saddle, your shots, if you're uh, like a righty, to your left side and behind you and to your front left side are traditional shots. And those are called like the on, like they're on your onside or your good yeah, your side, dominant like your, side, your dominant side. But if you're a right hand shooter and they come from your right side to the back quarter, it's like the offside for you. So you can't just, if it's passed, you can't flip back in the other way. So what you have to do is like do this move where you step over and cross and you just like kind of leaning out sideways away from the stand, like feet on the side of the platform. Mm -hmm. And the the platforms that come with the, the tethered ones have notches that kind of help you have some grip if you're pushing off of the side with them. And so he came in, you know, roughly 30 yards off the offhand side, reached across my body, pulled back and I shot and I felt like it was a little bit back. Um, and I saw him run out and he laid down for a while and then got up and walked over and lay down again. And so I was like, let's back out. So we backed out for the day for the afternoon and 
Bo and I and his dad went back that evening, and he had only gone another 40 yards. Yeah, yeah. But I felt like it was the right thing to do was just to go out because I knew if I pushed him, we were going to be in, in big trouble. But the, yeah. the good thing, it was – a better place than I had hoped, so yeah. at least he only went a little bit further. So. Yeah, and and it was it was easy as far as the blood trailing with the snow and yeah. everything that made it that made it nice. So we um we went uh so anyways yeah we found it and and drug it out and that's where I I didn't have the key to that camera at the time. Then went back a couple months later and I sent you that photo where us or you and my dad dragging it out through there and uh, yeah that was that was a fun that was a fun hunt. Yeah, I, I, I had a, a great time and be able to come and, and actually hunt public land PA. Yeah. Um and be able to, to get something done. That was that was nice, especially with only having roughly two days uh in yeah. the stand. I thought that was a lot of fun. So yeah. appreciate you taking me out there so and showing me around. No, no problem. That but um yeah, with that pack and again like the the a lot of the reason behind that trip and everything, it's it's cool to me and I've talked about it before, but with being able to, you know, work with a company like Sitka that doesn't, you know, cut corners on anything and aren't, you know, you're not going to release the product until it's a hundred percent right. It, it was, it's painful. Like when you see something at the beginning stages and knowing it's not going to be, you know, released for up to, you know, three years or, you know, however long it takes really to get it, get it done. But I'm really excited for the, the finished product uh to come out like you said it's it's specialized it's going to be for you know if you if you like to you know carry everything in with you i mean it's got enough room to be able to take everything in for rut sits for late season and it carries the weight well enough that that you're not it's not you know painful on your shoulders or anything else so yeah and we we actually took a bit of a like a it's got a bit of a big game chassis style pack on the, at least in the hip area yeah. and with some of the load bearing. So using that format and the, and we, we are lucky to be able to work with a crew that does design work that has been in the pack industry for a long time. And they've, they've built, you know, for a lot of the very best uh, brands when it comes to load bearing. And, and so that, that was key is being able to carry, if you're going to carry that much weight too, it, you know, there's no way to make it super, super comfortable, but you can, you can haul in a, a load with it. And yeah. it's, it's, it's nice for those purposes and, and it makes quick access to gear. And like I said, for the saddle thing, it's super fast. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, being able to haul that in, it's, it's, I, I've really liked it for that. Yeah. And so like in the past for that style of hunting, I've always used like a Western style, you know, frame pack and everything, which can be pretty big and bulky plus loud because most of them aren't designed to be quiet they don't need to be they're designed for you know the durability where this has you know it's quiet it's got the layout for again and the other thing with a lot of the western packs is they're usually one giant pocket mm -hmm. there's not easy way to store things when you're in the stand this is a pretty good combination of you know kind of a, a big game pack but with a with a white tail mindset to it i guess yeah. would be a good way of describing it Absolutely. I think, yeah. And having, having a good crew, it, you know, you were one of the key people giving input. And then there were several others that, that do that style of hunting. And if, if you're mobile, it's, it's, it's going to be really good for that. So. Yeah. I felt like a, sort of like an attachment to it when like, that was my favorite thing that like that you've had me test because it's just, that's what I do and, and everything that, that I use it for and the way I hunt, that was like, the backbone of it and i've all i've went through i don't know seven or eight different packs trying to find the perfect one and never could find it you know i mean i have one sitting here next to me now that i use for podcast equipment now you know it's like yeah. <laughs> you know trying to find what that right thing is and and yeah i'm really really happy with that how that turned out yeah it was kind of funny one of the times you i think it was a year or two ago i can't remember when you were using it but uh, i feel like kind of a bad parent at the same time because you <laughs> called me to giving me your feedback and my wife and my son were up in like Tom Minor Basin in Montana and they were hiking and apparently my son like fell off like a not a cliff but like a mini cliff and like cut his head open and they like had to drive him so I was meeting them at the hospital and I beat them there and so you called and I literally you and I were discussing on the pack while 
my son was on his drive back <laughs> from Tom <laughs> Minor Basin with a gash in his head waiting to go to the hospital to get stitches. So, I, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, now I have a bit of attachment, but everybody knows I'm also a bad parent at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do remember that. I'm like, Chris, do you need to go? Or all that? They'll be here in a few minutes. We're going to yeah, talk a little bit. Yeah, they were on there. I was like, I got it's 15. Fine. They're on the way. He's not... He's not bleeding to death. They, you know, he's. he's <laughs> You're not going to talk your way out. It'll of buff thing. out. No, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and then the uh, one of the other times I called to give you feedback on it, you were processing an antelope. <laughs> Was I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. Did you hear like the grinder going in the back? No, you were like, "Hey, uh, like, like you had me on speakerphone, and it was hard to hear you." I'm like, "What are you doing?" And you're like, "Oh, I'm, you know, cutting up this antelope." I don't remember <laughs> if you shot it or something. Yeah, I, no, I I'd, I'd shot uh, an antelope. Uh, I think that same year. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you always call me at the wrong times. Is basically what you're telling me. Yeah, I guess so. To I'm give a feedback and quit calling. I'm I'm a bad enough person that I actually will take the call. No matter what's going on around me. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I do appreciate that. I'm not the same way, but. <laughs> Chris's I'm, kind heart. I'm usually the one that has a backlog it's of the first time that's calls. ever been said. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Owen, oh, did you get a chance to test out the pack at all? I did not. Uh, maybe when that, ori- the very original, I think I did. Mm-hmm. I took it out one evening, but um, yeah, that was a, many moons ago, many yeah, and it trials ago doesn't necessarily fit the the business you're running here though either. It's not no, but I do have appreciation for it because before this I did a lot of public land and I do mm-hmm. I do appreciate it. I I do need to get on the um the saddle train and see what all the cool kids are doing yeah. like Bo. I mean it's Bo's so like, nice coming here. That's nice and cozy. <laughs> I'm sitting up in the big old Millennium, right? Like relax. Yeah, you know we aim to please, but uh, yeah. You know, then you get guys like Bowen that are super hard to deal with and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, Bo, just go do your own. Thing. Right, all right, Bo. Here, yeah, here. Just go. <laughs> Kindly head out in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Bo, just walk to the edge. Owen, there's nothing here. Yeah, just set up Cliff. right there. You'll be fine. I'll be fine. They use it, I promise. <laughs> you no. were committed, though, because I was like, seriously, you're going to do a hanging hunt for like a three-hour sit? You're like, yeah. I mean, yeah going for it which is it's funny because when we were uh together i think in the fall in october chris you kind of like so what's everybody think about saddles and i think the majority was like bah (laughs) (laughs) no yeah nope i don't think i gave it it's uh due credit there's definitely drawbacks there but there are definitely pros pros and if you're a mobile I it's, think, mo- yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and for me, like, I mean, just like I can scout and and then set up on the hot sign right now before, you know, I'd be carrying a stand and sticks, and you don't want to walk as far when you're no. carrying that as, you know, and... and probably and, a touch noisier, too. Yeah. No matter how hard you try, it's going to be probably noisier. Yep, and I'm still learning the, the saddle thing, too. I mean, I got a lot to learn. I need this coming summer, I need to practice all the shots a lot better. I got it middle of the season, and... Did not practice once at home. I went right out <laughs> in the field and did it. Not the right way to do it, but <laughs> <clears throat> I had hunt. I had a hunt, so that's right. <laughs> kind of you know. And here I am, still three months later, still hunting. But <laughs> uh, I think it, it speaks. Do you even kill anything? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, he's referring to. I got a, a message on Instagram today. It's like, hey, does uh, do you even kill anything, bro? Yeah. Oh, oh, those are nope. the best people. <laughs> those are the best people. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I was laughing. It's, it's fantastic. It's, yeah. I frame that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I guess the, the moral of that story is that it's been, it's been good getting to be able to work on that pack and everything else, some exciting things coming in in future years so yeah it's awesome having you guys both give input so everybody yeah. has their own their own take and or their own style um nobody's gonna think of things the two the same way so it's it's good i like to have lots of hands yeah involved in it because i, I definitely have my biases and i'll yeah i'll uh say you know but so this also, is the way i do it you're yeah. also super diligent in in what you do we try to make things good, um, yeah. So yeah. We, we normally get there. I the think. details, the attention to details there. Yeah. 
If there is anything wrong with the pack, though, it's probably because Chris overruled me on my recommendation. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And then I can also <laughs> say if there's anything wrong with the pack, it's probably because Bo gave input on <laughs> right. it. This so, right. This is what always a way does. to point fingers. Yeah. It's <laughs> right. It'll be like, well, that's what everybody does, Bo said. Well, actually, no, Bo's the only one that does it that way. Okay. Bo doesn't know packs. Yeah. <laughs> Bo knows. Bo, Bo knows, knows mobile. That's right. <laughs> The first the first podcast I ever did was with uh, Brian Call and Jordan Harbertson. And Brian's like, you need a thing at the end. Like, you know, he says, stay gritty at the end oh, of all podcast. <laughs> oh, gritty. <laughs> and he goes, you need like, like Bo knows. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do You didn't that. do that. No. Instead, you grew a mustache. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Good mustache. That's your Thanks. thing. Bo knows mustaches. Yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah. It's good. We'll go with that. Mm-hmm. All I'm right. from Auburn, so I can say all these things, and it's it's okay. I can use the the bow nose stuff. So. Speaking yeah. of mustaches, the beard you have going it on right now is is not as good as. <laughs> is your wife on board? Or is she off board? She is definitely off board. <laughs> She's like Ohio. That thing's coming off. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's coming off. I know. I've been trying to influence him just to do the mustache thing, and he said the you did. You sent me a picture like twice now of you doing it, but it lasted for like a total of seven minutes, and then your wife made you shave it off. Oh no! I literally the night before I came out, I was like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give Bo a hard time. I'm gonna show up with this mustache, and I walked out of the bathroom, and I had it, and she looked at me. She didn't say a word. She just pointed, <laughs> pointed. And she was like, mm -mm, Nope, gotta get rid of it. So, I've had the same experiences too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, that's probably why you guys are married. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, guys. Well, what do you say we end this one? Yeah, um, you, I you got to drive home tonight. I yeah. hate goodbyes. Yeah. So I guess the last thing I would ask is, Owen, can you tell everyone where they can find more information about Latitudes and how they can, you know, I guess get a hold of you if they're get interested of us. in hunting. Yeah, you can. Uh, we do have a website which we basically direct if anybody has any questions. We have some stuff up there, but um, OhioWhitetailCompany.com uh, for pricing and everything. We just ask for dates just because things are kind of ever changing. Just give us a buzz and or at Latitudes Ohio Whitetail Company. Just co. Uh, it's long. It's a mouthful, but uh, you can find us on the Insta Face Instagram. <laughs> all that stuff but uh i gotta keep up on that it's been a little while yeah but season's wrapping up so we'll post some photos from the fall look forward to turkeys and uh sheds and away we go again yeah don't tell anybody it's turkeys we haven't seen any of them no turkeys <laughs> no turkeys here not a single yeah. one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a few of them. oh man so, we'll appreciate you coming out too it's been awesome to help yeah you guys yeah th thank you very much We'll pray for cold next time. Yeah. It's coming next week. That's right. Should have been here next week. Next week. Yep. Looks great. Yep. He'll be, uh, Owen will come out to check cameras and see me sitting in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what? Oh, cold Bo's front. Here. <laughs> Bo's here. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Bo. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.